just been good so got my uh, laundry in late because <clears throat> I was taking notes of an idea that I got before I showered and shaved so here's the notes and then I'll get started on the lawsuit objection I uh, in, in junior high which was in Southern California at Auburn Auburn Jail, as we called it, Auburndale. I uh, call it middle school now. They probably called it middle school then. We called it junior high. Uh, I was uh, still, uh, well, I I signed up to play uh, to play baseball, and uh, and so I. Played uh, for part of the season. I didn't stick around for the whole season. And then for some reason, I thought I could try out in high school. <laughs> um, but uh, playing outfield, uh, Coach Perez uh, would uh, practice by hitting balls out to the outfield and then we'd throw them in and, and uh, he uh, one practice yelled out to me Travis get glasses or you're off the team I don't think he called me Travis I think he called me Goodsell uh, and uh, uh, what happened was that I was slow to respond uh, to the ball as uh, my vision was getting worse by then. I was given glasses in kindergarten, but uh, didn't like the heavy glasses sitting on my nose and uh, obstructing my vision outside of the lenses. And, uh, and so I never wore them. And so uh, as I was the tallest kid in class, I was set in the back that was a double uh, purpose for the teachers is that uh, having me in the back uh, would prevent the good kids from being able to see the board <laughs> All right. allowed them to see the board because they got to sit up close uh, and uh, the bad kids who were put in the back were uh, tempered by having me back there. <laughs> Little did they know that I uh, ended up having friends in low places. But uh, as my vision was bad, I couldn't see the board. So the teacher would be talking about the lesson, doing things on the board, and I couldn't see it. So if it wasn't covered in the book, I couldn't follow along. Uh, I still managed to graduate with honors. But uh, uh, as I was switching from baseball into basketball, uh, the junior high, I, I, uh, my parents got me uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar type goggles, though they weren't quite that. Uh, but. Uh, That's what the kids referred to them as, and uh, I, I, I still, they weren't good enough. I wasn't able to see peripherally, and the basketball you need to be able to see peripherally. And, uh, and so can't contacts were coming out, soft uh, disposable contacts, and so my parents being rich, I was able to get in on those and uh, it took some getting used to as uh, there were uh, a couple of times where they pop out during a game or at least one of them did. I've got astigmatism in this eye uh, because I uh, have a losing battle with a dead tree branch in my placentia home. I've got a scar still to this day as all eye doctors recognize it. Uh, but when I got glasses and 
switch to contacts, wow, what a difference. Uh, the hills in, uh, at Auburndale, I could see them. I could see that there were trees on those hills. And, uh, I mean, it was, it was amazing, the difference. Everything was brighter, uh, and I could see details, and I could now see facial expressions. I had lived my life to that point, uh, not responding to people that were outside of my range of, of view, who were blurred uh, to me, and so uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't see people's facial expressions from afar. And uh, people had always thought that I didn't like them uh, because uh, I didn't respond to them when they were responding to me uh, because they were out of my sight range. And, uh, and because I had to squint in order to see in the distance, like on the chalkboard, uh, people would think that I was scowling and angry. <laughs> and so, fortunately, I was not in a Mormon society, uh, so that uh, I didn't have a big push by my peers to force me to smile all the time when I'm already not angry. What a nightmare that would have been if I had grown up in Utah. And so, uh, I went on my uh, mission for the church at 19 to New York, New York, and halfway through, I, I was sent to Newburgh, New York, uh, with uh, Mark Augustine, and I know him because he plays a role in locking me away for the rest of my life, which ended up only being six years instead. He never did like me. But uh, uh, he uh, surprised me one day in the morning, said, hey, uh, put on your regular clothes. We're going to go to the, the youth center and uh, go coach basketball to the kids there. Oh, we are? <laughs> okay, whatever. He didn't want to tell me. Uh, he was the junior companion, uh, and uh, and so that's what frustrated him is that uh, he didn't understand that my first first rule of leadership is train your replacement. <laughs> so I was training him to be a leader, and he just couldn't grasp the concept, and was very upset and angry with me, and was constantly wanting to go on splits so that he can go complain to the mission president about how I'm a horrible, lazy missionary who's slowing down the work, and as everyone else in the mission was getting 200 baptisms a month, everyone, literally, I'm not joking, what Kofer did let a fire on everybody, and they were literally, every companionship was getting 200 average baptisms per month. When I first got out there, I was told, oh yeah, on average, you'll get two baptisms your whole mission for the two years. 200 a month. I mean, the work just boomed. And yet, there I was with Augustine, nothing. And so, uh, uh, he was constantly complaining that it was my fault. Uh, the, uh, to distract from where I'm going with this, as I always do, uh, the zone leader uh, came bursting into our apartment one morning before uh, the hours time uh, to make sure that he caught us. He was going to expose us for uh, being lazy bums and getting bad numbers where everybody else was getting 200 baptisms a month. And so he was going to expose us, expose me, to the president to confirm that Augustine was right. 
He said, where's your membership records? They're on the table. <laughs> you didn't think they'd be? So I went marching over to the table and saw my three thick volumes. Is it like this one? Yeah. Thick like this. Three volumes full of records of the records that I had designed myself. There were lots of other missionaries that I had seen as I'd gone from area to area who had created their own version of members or investigator records. I designed my own because none of them were sufficient. And uh, as we had been there for uh, so many months, I think it would have been about five months by then, because uh, after six months, Coford finally set me free. Set me free. Augustine stayed <laughs> and got a new companion, whereas I got to move on. <laughs> so he actually saved me uh, from Augustine, but uh, uh, assigned me to the Bronx uh, to uh, uh, fix their membership records that were a complete disaster. And. Uh, because of what they found, that I was the one responsible for the three volumes of that thickness that you saw there of uh, uh, paperwork, detailed records of everybody we came in contact with and what level and how receptive they were. And uh, along with a mapping of where they are. So that future missionaries can say, oh, okay, this person lives here, and, and this is where they were at, where they left off. Of course, future missionaries that came in, they think they know better. They threw all my stuff away. <sighs> but, uh, so, yeah, in the mission, many people were upset that the missionaries were coming back over and over again after they told them, stay away, we'll leave us alone were getting pissed and so yeah I designed them specifically to prevent any future attempts as people were telling me you guys just came the other month <laughs> we're sick and tired of you guys coming around here we told you no leave us alone sorry it wasn't me they didn't keep records like I am and so uh, we went to the youth center, back on track, and uh, uh, we were assigned a group of kids, and we were just playing around with them. Uh, Mark Augustine was trying to teach them how to shoot, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. He, was, he took over. I just let him. I was just there to because I was his missionary companion and we were supposed to be together. And, uh, and then we go out to play the game and then I see exactly why we were there. Well, Chamberlain was the guest referee. Um, and uh, yeah, he wanted to see Wilt Chamberlain. But uh, uh, there we were, two white guys with black kids. And uh, Will Chamberlain, I saw his facial expression. He was not happy. <laughs> I never approached him, not for an autograph. Uh, I, I knew that he was there for the kids. He was not there for me. And so I knew it was going to be very inappropriate if I tried to go talk with him and all that crap that fans do to, to professional players and other celebrities and so uh, when I was in Connecticut uh, likewise uh, when uh, um, a Mormon what's his name Young Steve Young when Steve Young showed up to church at his parents place because he was visiting his parents uh, uh, he uh, surrounded by all sorts of girls. 
Oh, oh, Steve, Steve! Look at me, look at me! I mean, the guy couldn't walk anywhere. They were like right up against him. I was just looking, going, oh man, just leave him alone. Nobody would leave him alone. And then other guys and the missionary companion, oh, I need to get a signature. I didn't, you know, leave him alone. <laughs> but uh, nope, people just won't leave certain people alone. Uh, but he never gave me a look. <laughs> he was too preoccupied with uh, preventing from peaceful assembly. Uh, but Will Chamberlain, I remember, giving me the look. And, uh, and I knew exactly why he was giving me the look. Uh, but uh, I then went on uh, to marry a Canadian at Riggs College. And uh, she took me uh, to Canada, and I went to the University of Lethbridge. And so I decided, why not try to see if I can go into the career field of teacher? And I soon found out uh, that feminists tried to control the teaching education uh, to prevent men <laughs> from entering the profession. Uh, they purposely had feminists involved in the teaching curriculum course courses, and uh, I realized uh, they don't want me here, as I got the looks. And uh, so, yeah, they, they made sure to let me know I didn't belong. Just like Will Chamberlain gave me the look, I didn't belong. And so, uh, then Mark Augustine participated in having me disappeared for what ended up being only six years rather than the rest of my life and I got out and while I was out I went to Smith's the superstore downtown uh, it was my first time in freedom going to that store and so I was kind of you know a little overwhelmed as it's a dual story uh, store uh, with the furnishings and it's like a super Smith's like super Walmart uh, isn't just a grocery store, it's also the, the retail uh, goods. And I uh, was trying to find my way around and looking for things. And uh, while I was at the top floor, getting up the escalator, or the elevator, I don't take the escalator if I've got a shopping cart. <laughs> and, uh, and wandering around trying to find something, and I to see another man, an older man. He's got a shopping cart, and he looks very familiar. And uh, it's Russell M. Nelson, elder Russell M. Nelson. This was 2014, before the Tetrad and the deaths of three that took Packer with them to uh, make Nelson uh, one of the, the presidents. And uh, I, I saw him also wandering around, trying to find things and find his way. And he caught my eye, and uh, I just smiled. I didn't approach him because I don't do that to celebrities. I, you know, I was I had to sit next to uh, Burgess Owens when he gave a uh, fireside. Uh, out on my mission as well. Uh, and if you don't know Burgess Owens, then you're not a football player. <laughs> uh, and so as a missionary on my mission out there in New York, uh, and I think it was also, no, it was Poughkeepsie where he showed up. Uh, I had returned to, uh, returned to Poughkeepsie or was it where I first was at Poughkeepsie? I can't remember. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Burgess Owens was the guest speaker, and I was the missionary, so I sat on the stage, sat next to him, uh, until he got up to speak. And that was it. I shook his hand to say, hey, how you doing, and oh, good to have missionary, blah, blah, blah. And he'd speak, and it was over, we went home. I, I don't harass people. 
celebrities are people too. And uh, I had a policy of not bothering them. And so Nelson, likewise, didn't bother him. Because uh, I was new, I couldn't help him. You know, hey, I see you kind of looking for something. Uh, can I help you? Couldn't do that. Because I'm new too. <laughs> I'm trying to find something. Uh, one of the the uh, store clerks recognized him, immediately came to his aid. Oh, can I help you find something? Me? I'm on my own. <laughs> so he got help, so I, great. Uh, and uh, tried to find some stuff, then went back downstairs and was looking for some more stuff. Lo and behold, so was Nelson. This time, uh, uh, he saw me again and and gave me the look. Uh, but it wasn't of, you don't belong here. It was more of, you didn't help me, and I'm still needing help. And you're not helping me now either. And... <laughs> And uh, nobody was downstairs to help him down there. And at least I don't know. I found where I was going and found my product and checked out and left. And that was last I saw of him at Smith's. Until uh, the bishop finally let me off of the probationary period, having been away for six years, and uh, uh, granted me a, a temple recommend. And uh, uh, sure enough, uh, while I was going to the temple on a daily basis, I saw Nelson. And uh, he was at the, their, uh, the uh, name generation desk, where they print off the names that Mormons do on their computer. And uh, he uh, was... Uh, uh, apparently his wife was doing all the names. He would go to the temple, get them printed out, and then would do the mails and uh, bring them back and have pass them out to the family. And so he had like a huge pile. I mean, we're a huge pile. And uh, I smiled and thought, oh, that's nice. Uh, before I was disappeared for six years, I was doing genealogy. I not only had a huge pile, I had a huge pile times ten. Well, oh, maybe five. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating. <laughs> I had a lot. And, uh, and so I, I thought it was quaint that he had a lot, too. As I knew that there were probably some problems with the system that his wife was not understanding yet. But, uh, uh, again, didn't approach him. Uh, he just got his names and then went downstairs. And I went, got my names printed up, and then I went downstairs. And never saw him that day. Uh, and came back another day, saw him again. And again, he was getting names, not as many this time. Uh, this time, others were flocking around him. And he was putting on a happy face. And then he dropped uh, a card or two and bent over to pick him up. I had to stand back uh, because of all the people in the way of going down the stairs. You're supposed to go down those stairs. You're not supposed to go down the other stairs because people are supposed to be coming up those stairs. But uh, they don't regulate that strictly. Uh, but uh, I, so I was there waiting for the crowd to disperse, and uh, he pick, bent over to pick up the card, and then looked up and saw me. And he looked, and then it clicked. He recognized me, as now I saw the face of. You don't belong here because of what you did at Smith's. <laughs> so 
yes, having uh, contacts, being able to see facial expressions, uh, plus uh, my love of uh, Bloom County and especially Calvin and Hobbes uh, helped me un recognize differences in facial expressions. And so only when people know that I'm looking for a facial expression do they try to put on a poker face to try to deceive me. But uh, people who don't know anything about that, uh, they are honest in their facial expression, even though internally they may think they're trying to cover up what they're really thinking. And uh, yeah, I, I knew that he didn't think I was welcome. And then uh, he became the president of the Quorum of the Twelve, and then I saw the signs in the heavens where I identified him as Mars. Uh, first was uh, Family Discovery Day, where he was the guest speaker, and uh, the sign involved a partial lunar eclipse during the flood in Elko that surrounded Salt Lake City. And so I, I knew Nelson was Mars. I still had to confirm by following Mars uh, further, and sure enough, when, uh, well, I saw him uh, with the total solar eclipse on Monson's birthday. There was Mars with Mercury on the total solar eclipse on 21st of August, 2017. And, uh, and so, again, he was one of the three extra stars added to the crown of the Virgin who gave birth to Jupiter on 23rd September 2017. He then also played a part in being in the sign of the dragon on the fifth dark day of Hanukkah, 17 December 2017. And the full con confirmation that Mars is Nelson occurred when Monson died at 10.01, 2 p.m. Uh, as the quadranted meteor showers were falling from the tail of the dragon, uh, Mars was now at the top of the scales of Libra, the judge scales, uh, signifying that he was now the judge as Monson dies. And so that confirmed to me, oh, yep, sure enough, Mars is Russell M. Nelson. And so then that summer, he held a youth conference, fireside or whatever with his wife. They talked about their time in Russia. After Nelson came out in that April conference saying, oh, we're gonna have a temple in Russia. We're not going to tell you about Russia being a criminal organization and a mafia economy that we had to deal with. We still don't have a temple in Russia. We now have two mission presidents. But uh, in that fireside with the youth, that's where he came up with the Nazi Youth Battalion, telling them to stay off the fake news. <laughs> leave their Mormon friends to go convert other friends who are underage. Uh, so yeah, that was when Mars was at the mouth of the goat beast, Capricorn. So yeah, I was like, oh crap, something's going to happen that day. Then I find out he was speaking, listened to what he was spoke on, and went, oh man. So, yeah, I've been following Nelson as Mars all this time, and so, yeah, tomorrow, uh, the sign of the goat beast, or not the goat beast, the tail of the water dragon this time. He's at the tail of the water dragon. I doubt Mars is going to fall from its orbit, <laughs> but... Uh, I am doing my lawsuit and expect to have it finished today, if not submitted tomorrow, 
as uh, it will occur in the morning or the night sky uh, rising in the east setting in the west as I'll see it during my run because I saw the the moon that's waning it was already with Jupiter then went to Saturn on the day that the judge in our case gave her order uh, to recommend uh, denying my case altogether that's why I'm having to file my objection today as tomorrow the moon will then be with Mars at the tail of the water dragon so yeah, it's amazing how it works still can't quite figure it out <laughs> I just observe and make note of the observations and uh, it's amazing how it happens so I think my laundry might be done I tried a different cycle thing I don't know if it's going to add another 20 minutes on top of the additional 20 minutes that the landlord gave us a new machine for Uh, yeah, faces of hate telling me I don't belong. But yeah, I moving to Utah, saw them all over the place. It's Mormons, the single women, as I try to go to the single wards uh, and to try to find another mate, as Mormon doctrine tells us to do. Yeah, got it all over the place. First, I'm the new guy, then they find out, oh, you're, you're divorced, you have kids that, that she got, which means there must be something wrong with you, 